All right, second one. The average U.S. home price measured by Fred's, which is like the economic uh, data. I, f- I forget what the, what is it? Do you know what the acronym stands for? Uh, I'll I, just know, up, I just know I'll, what is Fred, but. Uh, I'll look Fred's it up for you right now. Yeah. U.S. National Home Price Index is what I'm using to, to measure average U.S. home price. Will decline by more than 10% from current levels, which are already down from all-time highs. So uh, down slightly, but. 10% at least. That is my expectation. Here's my reasoning. And I've got a little more rationale for this one. First of all, we all know that rates rose this year, which means affordability is lower. So you kind of have to go down the, the home price to, to find a house that you can purchase if you're a wannabe home buyer. Um, but when rates rise, there's also, and you can kind of, everyone probably has their own a- anecdotal experience with this where someone was buying or selling a home and they had their own kind of, um, I don't know, just uh, encounter with how this works. But I think there's kind of a period where, and there's, I've heard terms called the cap gap in like, uh, for like real estate investors, but Basically, it's a difference between sellers' expectations and buyers' expectations where sellers are anchoring to the last price that they were quoted or the last bid, which was kind of higher. Maybe it wasn't exactly what they were looking for, but it was higher than the bids they're currently getting. And so they anchored that and they say, well, I I got a bid four months ago for 400000 Why would I give it to this person for three seventy five? dollars um, that kind of thing. Whereas the buyers, on the other hand, simply can't afford as much because the rates have risen. And so I think there's a resetting of expectations on the seller side where you don't see the prices starting to sell for less until they kind of accept reality of their home isn't worth as much as they thought. So that's that's kind of my first one. I think we're kind of in that in-between period where we're going to start to see some of the homes go for lower and lower prices. Second one, um, just in terms of data for home buying demand. Uh, Redfin kind of has this cool report. They actually, I find it funny because it's like not that they're pretty candid in a lot of their like real estate reports and it isn't advantageous to their business. Like they're basically saying like, you know, we're kind of screwed right now, but they're, they're very uh, direct about it. So anyway, they they give a whole bunch of stats. So in the week ending December 21st, so most recent data that they produced, Mortgage applications were down 36% from a year ago. Redfin's home buyer demand index, not sure exactly how they calculated it, was down 20% from a year ago. And Google searches for homes for sale were down 38%. So across the board, you're just seeing less demand. Obviously, that's a function of, of mortgages rising and price probably you know, the price is not, not falling in line. Um, and then additionally... We, we kind of talked about this, but we've seen layoffs from big tech companies across the board. I think that's having an effect on big metro areas. There was another report that said 17 of the 50 most populous metro areas saw home prices decline this year. I think that'll probably continue um, in, in some of those big cities where they have a lot of tech employees, um, a lot, maybe a lot of tech employees relocating, selling their houses, stuff like that. Um, and However, all that data would indicate that home prices would drop maybe a little more than 10%. I think the two reasons or the two like buoys or the things that would maybe keep home prices somewhat elevated would be that home equity is still at record high levels. So there's not going to be a bunch of forced sellers. People can wait um, because it's not like it's delinquencies. They can always reverse mortgage if they need to. And then I still think there's a shortage of homes. Uh, It's hard to kind of put a pin on it because inventory is always at its lowest during the the peak of the bubble, but um, it just it's kind of like an anecdote thing where people you know you, you see like affordability has just risen over the last ten years. So um, at least real real you look at it now, um, and affordability is rough. So I I just think there'll be more homes that get produced over time, and there's just so much excess demand relative to the available homes out there that that'll keep keep a bit of a buoy however i still think prices will fall so that's that's my second bold prediction 10 percent home price decreases i concur with this one that home prices will drop i think there's a few factors that could keep it i think 10 percent might be like a good floor of the decline 
because unless interest rates from the Fed go down back to, or what are we at, four and a half right now, 2%, which I guess is never impossible, but seems unlikely. Uh, mortgage rates, you know, are going to be, they're not going to be 3%. They're probably not going to be 4%. Uh, and that really affects that affordability number. But I think we're going to find out in 2023 whether there was a shortage of homes or a shortage of listings. Because if it was a shortage of listings, there could be potentially even more downside. Um, you know, there was the Airbnb stuff, and right? not just Airbnb, but the short term rentals. I think we've talked about that before on here, where that's potentially, we don't really know. It's kind of hard to see uh, what one's there. Or, you know, the tech industry could have been, a, you know, that pocket like you just mentioned. And the works in progress stuff. So there were, there's record works in progress. So we'll see if that inventory can come online. What if that, you know, supply crunch that was really, you know, extending the lead times of get homes getting built turns into a supply glut. And then I think that could cause more to the downside. But I think, you know, there's, it's plausible that 10% is kind of that nice little soft landing, right? Do you think those two are my first two bold predictions are at odds with each other, though? I don't think if so, the, no. If inflation goes back to, say, let's say 4%. Uh, do you think rates would come down enough to push prices on real estate higher again? Yeah, that's the big question. I think it's a really tough because I, I wouldn't want to touch the housing industry right now because you're really betting on what the Fed's going to decide. But are they going to decide that that means they should lower rates or or just keep them? Because they're not going to lower them back to zero if the economy is fine and we have a soft landing and inflation goes back to say 2 3% or whatever, right? They'll probably keep it the Fed's runs at what, like three, four percent, right? That's kind of the long term average. Long term average is slightly higher, but I think it's a little bit biased because the 1980 period skews the data a bit. Uh, but I think maybe three to four percent makes sense. And then mortgages would be five, six percent, which also makes sense, right? I, uh, then, then the affordability is still still bad. So I think it's a long shot that if inflation comes down, which is also a bold prediction, right? That yeah. it would also cause the Fed to go back to zero is what you have to bet on if home prices aren't going to come down. So I really like yours. I feel like the home prices going down isn't even a bold prediction at this point. No, but... it's probably not. No, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of consensus. I, I'm just prepping for my next, my third third one here, but uh, I don't know. Do, do you think we need to go any longer? on that? I feel like we could probably sound like a broken record when it comes to home prices and maybe... It's just super interesting. They've been very interesting this year. What that dynamic has been—the affordability versus the mortgage rates—it's been—it's been pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it does affect? Do you think the wealth effect really exists there? Let's say home prices decline by ten percent. Do you think people spend less? I think so. Yeah. I'd say go with your gut on that one. Although people. Yeah. yeah, we're we're in the 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 investor community, the finance community that is so numbers driven. Majority of people are not like that, where yeah. the majority of people are not budgeting. They're going, man, my what? And it's the same, not even for homes. It's the same for the crypto assets, right? They go, man, my or whatever, or even just your your retirement portfolio. They base it off that credit card purchases, whatever. Um, yeah. I think that I, I don't think it's a huge part of it, but I think it can. You know, at, on the on the edges, impact something. If your home price, your estimate, or whatever you're using goes down by twenty percent, I think it'll. It, it wouldn't that scare you a bit? It would scare me. Yeah. The one thing I keep seeing though is people will just like, if the estimate is lower than they expect, they just think something's wrong with Zillow. But then they love to quote it when. It it shows a rising estimate. <laughs> Everyone should be required to read Daniel Kahneman, right? Because all we're seeing is the anchoring, uh, whatever you just mentioned, I forget the term is, and then the endowment effect is also at play with home prices. Because I've never, whenever it's someone that is like, oh, home prices will be fine, whatever, right? They're defending that home prices will continue to go up. It's almost assuredly that they will... Uh, you know, they, they, they own a home, right? 